Welcome again to Store University. I'm Chris Volk, CEO of Store Capital, and this is the third segment of what we plan to be 10 small introductory courses that are designed to help you evaluate and get the most out of your business. In our last segment, How to Calculate Return on Equity and Get Really Rich, I showed you how to compute an equity rate of return. I also illustrated for you that great individual wealth is created by generating rates of return on invested shareholder equity that exceed the rates the marketplace might otherwise seek in investments having the same levels of risk and the prospects for growth. So here was my initial example of how to compute the return on equity. In my illustration, the company has an 85% pre-tax rate of return, and that is awesome. As I noted, if another shareholder would be happy with a 20% pre-tax rate of return, then the value of the investment would be worth four and a quarter times more than it cost you. And that's just calculating 85%, which is the current pre-tax rate of return of the company that you created, and dividing that by the 20% rate of return required by other investors. So you multiply that by your initial $250,000 investment, and you are now worth over a million dollars. Hey, congratulations. But is there a simpler way of computing my pre-tax rate of return? Well, the answer to that is yes. And I call it the V formula, and my initial article on this was published in Strategic Finance in October of 1999. The manuscript earned their Librand gold medal that year for the best article of the year. The V formula owes some debt to the DuPont formula, which was created in the 1920s by the DuPont Corporation to compute equity rates of return. That formula was more of an accounting-based formula, however, and it has fewer variables. The formula was also inspired by the notion of economic value added, which was introduced by Stern Stewart and Company, which is a performance metric that calculates the creation of shareholder value. And I encourage you to look that up. Anyway, that's where the V came in. If shareholder value is created through financial rates of return that exceed what others expect, then why not just have a formula that computes equity returns from a financial as opposed to an accounting vantage point? Of course, I've been reminded more than once that my last name also conveniently starts with a V and I'm gonna definitely cop to that one too. In our next video, I'll discuss the six variables that are in the V formula. And until that time, I'm Chris Folk, and thank you for joining me.